It's the Premium Pete Show. Internets, welcome back to another episode of the Premium Pete Show. Finally sitting down with the one and only, okay, the crazy, I'm going to call him a crazy motherfucker, okay, a DJ, uh, a mixtape uh, guru from, what the fuck is a mixtape? Some people listening are like, what the fuck is a mixtape? Yeah, okay, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. he's been doing podcasting, he's been doing uh, a bunch of shit, the one and only uh, G-Unit's own DJ Who Kid. What's up, nigga? Let me tell you something, okay? First of all, right off the bat, okay, mm-hmm. one of the funniest episodes I've ever done with you is with uh, our brother, Rest in Peace, Combat Jack. R.I.P. Yo, that episode is one of the funniest episodes I've heard in my life. That was uh, that episode is just as equal as uh, my Howard Stern. Well, Howard Stern interview. was was legendary. First of all, for for people listening that never pro- if they never heard you on Howard Stern. Oh my God! It, that... it, it, it's for, it's crazy because just to give a small instead of going over the whole story, a small story is you went up to Howard Stern with loaded Lux. Right, which was so random. But why were you up there with Loader Lux? Uh, me and Loader Lux, we had to uh, judge a, a white rap battle, mm, mm. like two random white people that was rapping against each other, and we had to like judge it. But I went there to abuse my uh, opportunity on being on Howard Stern. Uh, the first thing I told him when I walked in, it's just like I, my intro to this show was, what's up, nigga? <laughs> and then Howard Stern was like, yo, because, you know, yeah. he's a little nervous about everybody, sure. you know, uh, talk show host getting fired from the N-word. Sure. So uh, I, I got him comfortable and he was bugging out. And then I don't know how we went from judging a rap battle to admitting to like cheating and orgies and touring and the number one question was you know this is the howard stern show why isn't anyone here abusing their power of like sexual manip- manipulation like because mm, mm. you know i dj'd with eminem you know i dj with 50 cent on tour i mean countless i mean cnn shout out to nori mm. uh puff daddy mm. i've done like vegas countless festivals and weird shit unlimited menage a trois and mm. pancakes mm-hmm. you know i stacked the hoes and all that <laughs> so i asked him i said yo so you gotta tell me no one here in the howard stern show don't abuse their privilege their privilege of like you can have sex right now even if you're married you can have sex but who's gonna get caught like who cares mm. and the whole studio was like it was like you could hear a pin drop. Mm. And then Howard Stern started stuttering because I was like, yo, you don't cheat? Like, you don't do shit? And then at the same time, uh, Robin is laughing at her ass off in the corner because she can't believe the shit she's hearing. And I wind up being there explaining my cheating techniques for like an hour and 10 minutes. So I was always only be there for 10 minutes. Mm. And I wound up staying there for an hour and 15 minutes talking about my dad, cheating, porn stuff, all kind of crazy shit. It mm. went from everywhere. Mm. You know my Michael Jackson horror stories, but yeah, you you honestly, when are you gonna put out a book? Because you have so many fucking stories, it's insane. Yeah, I have thousands of stories. Um, I'm actually working with um, the the writers of uh, Hypnotize. They did the Biggie movie, and they're doing uh, my book right now. So it's gonna mm-hmm. take like almost two years to, I guess to mock everything, put everything in order, time-wise, because my life was crazy even before the G-Unit stuff, like... Why do you say that for? Um, because, you know, I I was around when there was no hip-hop, so I came into the hip-hop living in Queens near Hollis and Springfield and all that mixtape shit, so there's a whole other, like, like, era (laughs) <laughs> I mean, everybody starts from the G and this shit, but I know, I know. there's a fucking era of craziness. Like mixtape, making tons of money. Ten in years of like before I even got into it, because I'm old as fuck. You know what I'm saying? I'm older than everybody in junior. I'm like, it should be grandpa unit. Like mm. I should be like the grandpa, but exactly. You still look, you still look young. Yeah, because I I shave. I fucking, I called L Cool J for hairline tips and mm-hmm. LeBron. You drink it, water? Well, don't call LeBron for hairline tips. I did, and he did help me with it. I'm not going to um, 
shave skin off my ass and put it on top of my head. Yeah. Like, that shit costs like 30 racks. I, I don't got time to blow money on, on, on my ass skin. And, you know, and then it don't even look that great on LeBron's head. Yeah. But Elk J told me to shave it. I didn't do that. What, so, shave your head? He said, just go bald. Because if I'm going to not wear a hat, Elk J was like, yo, just, just get a baldy. Fuck mm -hmm. it. And tell everybody to go fuck themselves. I tried that. Are you scared to get a baldy? I tr I went low. I didn't do a baldy. Mm. And, of course, everybody's laughing. Eminem laughed at me when I first came in with my first kind of like bald look. I kind of look like, I don't know. He, he called me like a, a gay construction guy. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't really. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking stupid. Yo, do you, <laughs> do you remember the first time you met Eminem? Like, um, do you remember your first impression of him? First time I met Eminem. Holy shit. Uh it was in Japan on the on his tour. We were opening for him. Mm -hmm. It's my first time meeting him. And it was kinda indirect because uh we couldn't get near him at that time because we didn't really know him. Mm -hmm. So he was like boxed in in his own private sections. Um White but, Privilege. Yeah, it was definitely whiteprivilege.com <laughs> going on. But uh the thing that was cool is uh late at night we were in Japan, so they had Yakuza. Mm -hmm. protecting us like we had real yakuza outside our doors but after 2 a.m they disperse so i was sharing a room at that time with young buck mm -hmm. uh oh oh man that doesn't sound too I good know, it sounds kind of scary with all the shit going on okay it didn't touch my ass this is, <laughs> make that shit clear i didn't see any <laughs> tranny stuff i didn't see a skirt or panties or whatever young buck was cool but young buck thought he was in jail like he would like take a shit and leave the door open what and talk to me while he's shitting i'm like yo bro we're not in jail <laughs> you know what i'm saying then then he would like literally like blast music where the speakers are like out of here like mm. you know when you blast the shit where sure. you're not supposed to go that high but he goes over it like max volumes out of here so i'm just like yo i can't stay in a room with this guy he smokes weed non-stop shitting like it was crazy so i begged sean money excel mm. can i stay in your room Meanwhile, I begged him. I said, I'll give you my per diem, whatever. I just, I'll sleep on the floor. So I, I started sharing a room with Shaw Money. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, everybody's there. D12, Proof. Everybody's down the hallway. You know, it, it, it was like a normal tour. Then all of a sudden, 2 o'clock in the morning, I called some Japanese bitches to come to fuck me and Shaw Money XL. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is fucked up shit. <laughs> you know? So one of them spoke English. The other one didn't. Mm. But it didn't matter because they're groupies because of the Eminem tour. Sure, they didn't sure. even know what 50 Cent was or G in it. They just wanted to fuck us because we're on the Eminem shit. It wasn't that big at that time. No, we were opening acts. Okay. So these bitches come and then I met them, I guess, outside the show or whatever. They were online. I told them, yo, come. And, we, and then I just explained to them just to fuck. Like, I just want to fuck. Like, so they understand fuck and, yeah. you know, suck and all this sucky, sucky. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> so one of them come. And I think uh, I told her that I had a big okichinko when J Japanese means I have a big dick. I wanted mm. to make sure that she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to check it out, yeah. So I introduced him to Shao Money. And then <laughs> I wanted to do Shao Money, but one of them was like, I don't know. But she said it in, in Japanese that, you know, Shao Money is a weird looking guy. Yeah. Plus, he was fat like hell yeah, back yeah. then, too. So she didn't want to smash him. So I told, Sha I told Shao Money, that she was on her period, so Shaw Money don't get mad or fuck up my fuck shit. Mm. So I, t I tried to get the girl to leave, like her friend, so I could just fuck her. I'll fuck her in front of Shaw Money. Because sure. Shaw Money be snoring and sleeping. Like, you can shoot a gun in there. He ain't waking up. Mm. I can fuck a girl in the ass. He ain't waking up. Like, <laughs> screaming, rape, whatever. He ain't waking up. So the bitch didn't want to leave. I was like, all right, I'm going to fuck you in front of him. And you. Like, both of them. So I started fucking her, and we all went to sleep. So we all leave our doors open on tour. So all of a sudden, this bitch is like sleeping on the couch, and she said the door opened, and somebody with a gun started shooting mm. like a silencer the at, fuck? At, at, at the, like just start shooting the silencer, but it went through the drapes. She faints. Mm. She fainted. Like, mm. So we're sleeping. We don't know what's going on. We don't, know, we don't know what the fuck happened, blah, blah, blah. So this bitch wakes up from her faint. <laughs> and grabs her friend screaming in Japanese da, 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 like screaming like crazy so the bitch wakes me up 
She's like, yo, I don't know. Somebody tried to kill you. <laughs> shooting, shooting, shoot. I was like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah, Salasa, shooting, Salasa. I was like, what are you talking about, yo? So I wake up Shaw Buddy, and then Shaw Buddy's like, yo, what the fuck are you talking about, yo? So I was like, yo, I think somebody's trying to kill us. Does the 50 Cent got beef out here? Because we, we're coming from all the 50 Cent beef. I'm thinking that somebody paid somebody in Japan to try to kill us. We did have beef in the after party like two days ago. Maybe they're coming after us. I looked in the hallway. There's no Yakuza. So I'm thinking that this is a setup. So first thing me and Shaw Money did, we called the cops. We mm. called the police. So the police came to fucking... Like, just to do an investigation, like, to check what the hell's going on. Japanese niggas is like, what the fuck? What are y'all talking about? Mm. But there were, like, holes in the fucking drapes. You know what I'm saying? So, we're like, we put the report in. I think somebody's trying to kill us. I think they thought I was 50 Cent. I, mm. I, I don't know if I do look like 50. Maybe, I don't know, with oil or some shit. I don't know. Maybe I kind of look like the nigga. But I thought maybe they thought they, I was 50. They were trying to kill me. So, all of a sudden, this is, like, days go by. Like, we're all scared on the road. So I, I finally see Eminem. He was at, like, fucking, like, game rooms and shit on tour. Like, he's rich as fuck. So he had, like, tennis courts. Like, it's not normal with him. He had, like, a game. Like, it was, like, a little baby great adventure mm. at every venue. You know what I'm saying? So now he finally comes in and he's doing ping pong with us. He, talk, he don't bring up shit. He's just talking, chopping it up with us, laughing with us. And then we're st we're talking about like we almost got killed the other day. So he's like laughing. He's like, word, get out of here. So he's just chilling. So two days go by again. And I happen to just go out to get a drink like 2 o'clock in the morning, like 2, 3 in the morning. I went, I went out to get a drink. Now I see fucking Eminem with fucking, like he had like, <laughs> it was crazy. He had like a fucking, I don't know if it was a ninja mask or some shit, but he had the gun. But the guns in Japan look so realistic. Like That's why they're illegal. To, you can't bring them back here. Mm. They look so realistic that kids would get killed for them. He would like kick the door in. He kicked fucking proof the proof door in. RIP DJ, uh, mm. RIP proof. He kicked the door in and starts shooting inside the shit. He looks at me and he just walks back to his room. And he don't even like, he don't say nothing. I'm like, yo, this guy was literally across from our room. Like, he, he his room was literally across from Shaw Money's room. He never came out to say it was him. He let the police investigation go down. <laughs> He's looking out the window, watching us, like, cry and fucking be worried. And this is, like, three, four days in. This motherfucker, what's and, the matter with him? And then, and then that's what started our relationship because there was only one time He's, he's laughing at us and he can't believe it that we even like he, he got us into his world and then he just started hanging with us. That's how we just all started getting cool. Mm. You know, and, 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 and I think I only went to like one club with him. He came to like one after party. And then, and then after that, we just been cool ever since. But that was the, the first time that I had any kind of like in-depth interaction with him and then we started becoming friends because you know, that's a very tight niche crew to be down with. You can't like enter that yeah sure sure it yeah. takes it takes a while so like the same seven people that hang with him you know you're going to london soon and uh you mentioned that you're gonna i think what janet jackson's gonna be out there no janet jackson's in new york okay oh she's in new york yeah i'm leaving for london at 7 p.m so i'm gonna hang with her at sirius okay before she she bounces did, did you ever tell her the story uh with, with her brother that's why i want this is my first time i'm gonna meet her okay so i'm gonna bring it up and i have the photo i have the photo right now on my phone ready to go with my 10 xt i don't even know where i got that 10 x polo shirt from but me michael jackson who looks like michael mm -hmm. got the whole michael jackson outfit the glove i'm gonna show her that and i hung out with so many jacksons like jermaine and Tito and all his weirdos, the, the dad, you know, and then Quincy Jones, of course. I interviewed Quincy Jones. I kind of like went through the whole Jackson historical back, but Janet is the only one that I haven't interacted yet. And I think, you know, that'll be my first time uh, bringing it up. You know, it's funny because it's like you have so many stories and, and you've been able to evolve. You know, you think about it like, uh, you know, you're doing the mixtapes, right? You, you know, it's like it, it, mix up mixtapes don't even exist no more but you've been able to evolve right mm -hmm. you know you think about like you know people will say a mixtape but it's not a mixtape the way it was back then you know but what i'm saying is you've been able to reinvent yourself all these years in my opinion you know you've been able to continue to evolve and continue to stay relevant but more importantly the thing that i like is like you know it's like you, you come to a point where it's like your stories just continue to pile up you know 
And and when I really think about shit like with Who Kid, I say to myself, I remember when you, you told us a story how you that when you came into the game early on, you were just like, you know, I, I wouldn't say, you, well, you said you were like lying or, or, or exaggerating stories. Like, yo, oh, I'm, yeah. like you said that, um, I forgot uh, if I remember that you said that when you met with, uh, I think, um, Russell Simmons or whatever. Oh, or, yeah, that's how or I was. Or his assistant. And you, you, you said you were going to Japan. I created uh, fake uh, club flyers. Mm -hmm. So back then it was so expensive to actually buy wax because mm. wax is like seven ninety nine, sixty mm. ninety nine for an album. That's expensive if you want to like get every record you want. It'd be costing like hundred fifty, two hundred bucks. So me, I, I I had to go to all the labels to get free wax, but f to speed up the the free wax where they don't question me. Like, when I show up, they just automatically get, you know, they would only sign off and give certain DJs free wax. Sure, sure. If you're from Massive Flex, they're going to give you the wax. Sure. But if you're DJ Boogaboo, you have to, like, prove yourself. Yeah, like, yeah, why yeah. am I giving, you know, wax was very, like, yeah. it, was, it was a short amount of supply. So what I did is uh, Kinko's was out back then. I don't know if Kinko's is still yeah. around. I'm old school. But I, I would print up fake flyers, and then I would photocopy them, and then I would, I would send up, like, or I would make, like, real flyers from uh, Kinko's and then I'll be like yeah I'm, I'm on my way to Japan I got a Japan tour and then I go to like uh, whatever Cambodia I'll make up like weird places that Def Jam wouldn't really like check up on like why would Def Jam check up on a DJ that's in Cambodia you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying and the flyer looks so official like it looks real but the fact that I lived in Hollis was the, the near Hollis or whatever mm -hmm. in Queens Village is the reason why I knew that my lie would somehow get to Russell where Russell would kind of like respect it because he's from Hollis. He's he's from around my neighborhood and, you know, he used to do drugs at my park, you know, like heroin or whatever. Mm. And then fucking, I used to see him. But mm. we just never we just never said what's up to him because he was like with his crew or whatever. So I knew that- On well, some fresh shit doing heroin? Like, like, like on some, like- like motherfuckers look fresh in the park doing heroin? Yeah, yeah, not like crackhead. Like yeah. he was just chilling. Like he was just like, he was doing it with, I mean, I guess heroin was cool back then. I don't yeah. know. Is it cool now? I don't know. I mean, I guess it's sad to say, but I think if uh, people who do pills, you can't afford the pills no more to do heroin. Oh. That's what happens. Shit. It's a big epidemic, man. Like, it's crazy too because if you think about it, most people, like our average people, say we grew up with kids, for, kids we were friends with, we grew up in our, in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Most kids that you hung out with would be like, yo, yo, you know, I'm I'm gonna shoot heroin today. Like, <laughs> oh shit. You no, know, you'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Think about that. It's almost such a bad stigma where you'd be embarrassed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but you know, people do pills, like pills are so expensive and they don't hit you as much and you can't afford them. I mean, I know per I know friends of mine that got a bad pill addictions that had to go away to rehab. Motherfuckers were doing like a thousand dollars a day in pills. Jesus. Versus doing heroin, you do mm -hmm. they did like fifty to a hundred hours a day. You know what I mean? And it got them higher for longer, which is crazy because a person who would never probably stick themselves or or do something like that, you know, is like, all right, I'm here for it. You know what I mean? Psh. Like sign me up. Like throw away the key. You I know? don't know why I never got caught up in drugs. I, I, my issues were like cheating and bitches. No weed, no nothing. Weed, I never. It was never an addiction. I I smoke with Snoop. I smoke with Cheech and Chong, like the like the leaders of like the legends of weed, like you know Wiz Khalifa and shit like that. You know, if if, if you're like a a, a legendary piehead, there's no way I'm not gonna not smoke with you. Like me and Willie Nelson, I smoke with him like crazy times because it's like yo, we're Willie Nelson. You know what I'm saying? But even back then, like like I said with Russell, it was easy to trick him, and then I was such a bullshitter and a great liar that. Even I started believing my shit. I was mm. like, oh shit, I'm not going to fucking Japan. Like, I thought I was going with this shit. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> you're like, like damn, I got miles. I, I fucking tricked my own self. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, uh, the, 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 I, I think shit was like, kind of like, it, it depended on what happened at that time because, you know, Russell Simmons was a great way for me to even get into the office because he wanted to meet who this DJ was from Queens. Mm. Yeah, I got to meet Japan. him. Yeah, yeah, I got to meet this. Yeah. Who's this nigga, man? Yeah. So he was like, what up, nigga? I was yeah. like, yo, what up, man? You know what I'm saying? So so my lies and, and some of my truths kind of like mixed. It was like it was like the best hip-hop fruit punch ever. Like mm. the lies in reality was cool because he knew all the drug dealers and all the gangsters in my neighborhood, mm. which I knew 
and they lived on my block combined with me fakely going to fucking overseas. So he put me on a list of guaranteed I'm going to get wax from anywhere, Def Jam, Sony. He gave me like all the lists. He approved all the outlets that give wax mm -hmm. because of Russell. Because he was like, he did parties back then. He was the shit, blah, blah, blah. But to top it off, Chris Lighty, who was like Russell's assistant at that time. So it went down to him to approve me. So the combination of Chris Lighty and Mike Lighty, I got cool with them. I left Russell alone. I don't need, any, I don't need to feed him any more lies. Sure, sure. So then I, st I stuck with Chris Lighty and Mike Lighty, which I knew that eventually Chris would move up in the ranks. Mm. And, if, and if, of course he did. So years and years of me just hanging with him got me to meet like Hype Williams. I got him to host a tape. Busta Rhymes hosted the first. A lot of people don't know this. Busta Rhymes hosted my first mixtape. Like, mm. And back then, but how did you, because you of that, Busta Rhymes. Because of that relationship? With Chris Lighty. Chris yeah. Lighty had an annual birthday party at his crib and he had me DJ it. And I begged him. I heard Missy and Busta's coming here because you know you have Violator and he had all the like major artists sure, sure. you know what I'm saying so uh, I begged him because back then nobody could get near Busta he had the Jad Jackson video which sure, sure. all this shit is coming to fruition in this podcast right here like yeah. I got Janet Busta everything is, is, is all coming together but for me to get Busta to like just to talk for like five minutes to shout shit out it was it, it just started it for me where I was like yo for me to go up against DJ Clue because I would have the same exclusives or he would have a little bit more than me, but I had the entertainment. Like, I had, like, the sure, the, yeah. the, the, the celebrity back backing of a tape. So I was like, yo, let me just abuse the whole industry. The Hype Williams, the Little X's, the fucking... You'd be surprised how much people hosted, like, my tapes. It'd be so random. It's just like, you know, Charlie Murphy, known him for... 10,000 years like I, Dave Chappelle the first like Dave, like Dave Chappelle was like yo please come DJ my first fucking uh, uh, pilot mm -hmm. for his Dave Chappelle show so you can imagine the faces of like these white people at the audience when he did his first Ku Klux Klan sure, you know, sure. like I was there like I DJed the first but I was like I'll DJ this shit for you only if you host like 5G the tapes mm -hmm. so I, I always had an angle because I always looked ahead Floyd Mayweather been around for like 30 fucking years, like even when he was nobody. I had him host. LeBron James hosting. Mm -hmm. Because I always saw that if someone's going to fly in to America, whether it's here, Miami, wherever, wherever they got bootleggers that sell tapes, they're going to go to Canal Street and then they gonna, if, if they see DJ Clue got the shit, they're going to buy his shit because they know him. But if they see, yo, there's a tape here hosted by LeBron James. Sure, sure. I go, what the hell is this? Why is Robert De Niro hosting this tape? Sure. You, you, Let me cop that. You were you was you were springboarding off of uh off of people that knew that you know they were percolating. You know you think about it, even mixtape back in the days. I remember you talking about it, you made a lot of money from them too. Yeah, and, and it, it, it's 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 kind of like uh, being in a boardroom and understanding a marketing plan. I I somehow because there was no social media back then, and I knew that the, all we had was bootleggers mm. and street legend status. Like it was from rumors. Like if I dropped the tape or Clue dropped the tape. Or whatever, K Slay, yo, did you get that new clue tape? You get that K Slay shit? Like, it's, first it goes out like that as a rumor. Then uh, a fan would either, if they're going to Jamaica Avenue, they're going to high school, they'll stop at a bootleg spot before they go to high school or, or before they go home. They're going to stop at a bootleg spot to cop the tape. So it was like, a, a, it was like almost like immediate. Like, once, you, once they hear it with no social media, nothing, there was no tweet. No shit. It's just all by word of mouth and cars. Like, cars with systems, when you hear the who yeah. kid, that's when you knew there's a new who kid out or a new clue out. Clue, clue, Manada. Like, I used to hear that shit in the cars. Like, yeah. oh shit, clue got a new tape. Get new Fuck tape him. out. And, yeah. and, and you would have them at the local stores. How Everywhere. Much you ha how much do you have to give the stores for that? How much was the mixtape? Uh, Back so, then, mixtape. you sold for? A tape would be 10. And then when the CDs came in, it yeah. was 20. Okay. And how much were you giving down. the stores? I would give the stores four. Okay. If it was a tape. Okay, so it takes... Or two, it takes depending six, on the store. Six or eight, okay. So. Yeah, and then uh, the CDs would be, like, CDs were so expensive when they first came out, and they were expensive to make, so they were 20. Okay. And then I would give the store, like, five. I'll get yeah. 15 a CD. Yeah. So it's to a point where I was laughing when I used to, like, collect money from all the 
Uh, you had a route Express. almost. You basically had almost a yeah, route. Yeah, I was, man, I was from Bronx to Staten Island to Brooklyn. It was like, it was endless. And yeah. then like, I, I shouted this out the other day. Uh, I, I ran up into an individual, RIP, uh, Justo, mm. who uh, taught me about stealing label lists, mm. which I was like, what? He said, yo, why don't you just steal this list? So I was with uh, MV and Splash at that time, and then I, I called Splash. I was like, yo, what the hell is this label list that they're talking about? Oh, that's just the, the, the list that, you know, the labels distribute to, Tower Records, all the shit. So I was like, what? He's like, yeah, come over. I'll show it to you. It was fucking like 10,000 stores, but it's Sony, like Sony's list. So I was like, so what, what I would do is I would get like a white chick or a Chinese chick to call every store because I, I don't think they trusted niggas at that time. So I would, <laughs> Yo, what up, nigga? I got a new mixtape, dogs. Like, then I, I had to have a corporate sure, sure. Way, structure. Like, they called every, and then we sent invoices. So Tower Records and all of them was getting like what? The labels were sending them. So my mixtapes, they didn't understand what a mixtape was. They thought it was like an album. True. But the problem came in where they would have like Jay-Z's album and then they would put mines next to it as if it was like a real album as promo. And then, of course, the mixtapes would sell more, but all these mixtapes had illegal cuts that weren't cleared that's never going to come out. And you would rather buy a mixtape than get the album anyway. Because we would sell stuff that we would think is hot and we want to sell the shit. Like, we want you to have hot shit. This is a mixtape DJ. You know what I'm saying? But Jimmy Iovine and everybody started picking up on it when I got their European and overseas lists. So I went to Interscope and I got the Interscope list. And that was, like, everything overseas. Like, man, you, you'd be surprised. Like... They were treating this shit like an album, but then they would put it in front of Snoop Dogg album. Like it'll be like Snoop Dogg mixtape and then Snoop Dogg album, and then of course everybody likes the Snoop Dogg freestyles, and then they, more Snoop Dogg shit. So it took like five, six to ten years, almost ten years until the labels started figuring out what's going on. But by that time, that's the golden year. That's the golden sure, era for sure. us. We're collecting. We're amassing. Do you remember? Cash. How, do you remember how much you you know like at one point in time that you made with the. I mean, uh, every drop would be, I don't know, roughly 25, 30 racks. Mm, that's mm. every drop at that's that time. That's a beautiful thing. And, like that's that. a, and that's a decent, is when I started fucking with 50, it was like fucking crazy because now I didn't have to steal other people's songs to sell sure. shit. I was, uh, it, it, it was it was a singular artist. And then that, that's what started me to just do like Snoop Dogg mixtape, T.I. only mixtape, Eminem mixtape because... You, you concentrate more on the fans, uh, like on a singular fan base, instead of like trying to make everybody happy with, you could have 20 songs, but they could be 20 bullshit songs. Like I have Nas, Jay-Z, sure, this sure. guy, that guy, but it could be a bullshit Nas song. It could be a fucked up Jay-Z song, even though it's new, but it could be whack. But yeah. we didn't care because we were moving it, but 50 Cent kind of like saved my life where it would be like all hot shit and it's just one like, you know one little thing of like uh, a package product of just 50 cent only and then i just hone in on just his fan base and you could sell like 50 to like fifty thousand and them shits like this yeah. is crazy like dj clue imagine what i was making dj clue i know i know being kicking he, ass he, three times the amount four times kicking the amount. ass but you know what you know i remember one time you told me that in the beginning you're on tour at 50 and you know sometimes things look better than they are I think you were only making like five hundred hours a show DJing, mm. right? But you were doing three hundred shows. Yeah. You know? So it's like you know you think about that. It's like one hundred fifty thousand. Add that shit up. But do you remember a, a time where you know that you elevated with, with with fifty, where you made like where you had an opportunity where you made a lot more money? Like you you didn't stay at five hundred forever, you know? Oh no, I mean, uh, like how do you? And I don't mean that only for your pockets. I'm talking about like in general. Sometimes we, we may work with a brand for a certain amount of money. How mm -hmm. do we elevate up? You know? Um, I was the king of like abusing all my resources and abusing. <laughs> I'm sure you are. That's why Fifty Cent always flips me over and goes in my pockets. Yeah, because he knows that if I'm there, I'm 
some way I'm making some kind of profit. Yeah. I was the king of like, yeah, 50 cents coming through for the walkthrough. <laughs> Did you like, get any money from the vitamin water? Ya. Did you nah. get any money? No vitamin water? What about, the, what about the G unit? Reebok's. Do you nah, have any problem in all that? that is fifty cent. Fifty cent. That's all G and. And he, you didn't get anything from that. No, I had I had nothing to do. I had nothing to do with any of that stuff. All I had, all I did was like the marketing stuff. Uh, I got the video game DJ. shit. DJ. Yeah, the DJing, the touring. There was never uh, a time tape. where he made a bunch of money and was like, "Yo, here, this is for you." No, we had to all make our own money. I never had to ask him for shit because yeah. I was already making so much just dealing with him. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. I think he respected that that I didn't have to need him to give me shit. What about you know the G Unit chain? You got that on the arm, no? No, I bought every everything. Wait, you bought. had to buy your own shit? Yeah, we bought everything. We were making. You like never gave me Rolexes money. or anything. Huh? But because uh, the point I'm trying to make is, Fifty is like the captain of the team. Yeah, can I respectfully say that? He is okay. I just, I just Look never at, like you know somebody like even this day and age. You even see like Coward would be the best. Like he buys his artist a Rolex, you know, like yeah. Rick Ross. Like I don't know if you ever seen him. Like had, that never happened back then. No, I never, I never, I don't know. I never needed, I never needed anything from him. I was cool. Like he gave me so much opportunity. I know what you mean. And bro. access to make so much money because of my affiliation. Like everything I am today is because of him. Like my affiliation with him. I, I just I just didn't I just didn't abuse it where it looks tacky like True. oh it's Fifty Cent's DJ because sure. you could be Ti's DJ you could be I'm, I'm just giving a gen, sure. gen, generality I'm not dissing any other DJ I'm just saying you could be like an artist DJ but that's the box that's set like okay whatever you're fucking this guy's DJ I didn't want to I didn't want people to think. Whatever, you're just this guy's DJ. I didn't want that box. Mm. If I'm with 50 Cent, I'm going to be cool with Gaddafi. I'm going to be cool with, you know, the Prince of fucking whatever, Zamunda. Whoever 50 Cent interacts with, I become cool with them. And now I absorb the content or resources that he's with. Because at the end of the day, I will give those resources more attention than 50. 50 is top of the world. He's he's, he's going to keep it moving. But I'll be the doorway. If you need 50, you call me. And at the same time, hey, you own this club. Maybe five years later, yo, I just bought like some crazy shit. I need you, I need you involved. I'll pay you to market it. Like it's always like that. Sure, sure. But this is like hundreds of people. This is not like one or two people. This is like hundreds of like doorways, hundreds of people that, I interacted with, and they're not the same person from like five, ten years ago. They're even either they're bigger or they're doing something else, and they always use me for whatever they need to do because I, I gave them different facets of what I could do. I do radio, marketing, sure. mixtapes, and then that's why I did six hundred mixtapes with every artist. Not to mention just U.S. I did U.K. artists, I did Canadian artists, I did fucking French. Mm, mm. I don't care, Booba, France, guy, we, we. Japanese, China. I did everybody's tape. I just wanted it to be like a like, like an international kind of connection where I've been there and I've done that. But those always open doorways. Like mm. I, I like I said, I'm going to London. I just came from Thailand. I just did Vietnam for the first time. What you were making believe came true. Did you ever? Did you ever take a take a step back to realize that? What you may believe when you were young, you're like, yo, I'm going, you were telling Russell Simmons that you were. Uh, yeah, all DJ. that was just to no, get but free it, be wax. it became true. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But that's not sick. That, that That's not something you ever sat back and like, holy shit. You ever feel like that? I, I felt like that. Well, I think when midway, I started feeling like that when I saw that I was getting stuff from the lies. You talked it into existence. Yeah. Or you lied it. You lied it into it's existence. It's the point where I don't have to lie that I really went. That, man, that's amazing. It's, it, it's funny that you, you say it like that because, yeah, it's just mind boggling. Like, I used to lie like hell just to get free wax. But then. When I physically, I guess when you talk yourself into it, you see yourself there. Yeah, it's crazy. Like when I saw myself in Japan for the first time, I was like, yo, I'm really here. Like, And I was there with Q from Worldstar. Like, yeah. Q booked Rest like a, peace. yeah, RIP. All these, all, yeah, all these crazy dead people on this podcast, by the way. <laughs> yeah, this shit is crazy. Like, when I first stepped foot in Japan, I was like, yo, I'm really fucking, I don't have to lie anymore. Mm, mm. And then I think the, the lies ended when I just, dealt with 50 that was it because yeah nobody's gonna like like when i had my lambos and ferraris and all that shit yeah i paid for the shit but because i knew 50 like yeah 
My 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 car scams came from fifty. Like yeah. if, if they knew I was making money, like there's no credit check. Yeah. They knew that I'm with G Unit. Like I could afford the shit. So why would you give me credit check? Like and then it was a scam anyway. So you know, at the at the high of G Unit, you know things like that, where like you said, don't even check your credit. You know, you, you they know you with G Unit. Do you remember any other times where you like, holy shit, like G Unit was so powerful that you could just like kind of walk through the back door and things and trying to walk in. Do you remember moments where you were just given anything you wanted because of it? Because at G-Unit, it was at a point in time where it was... Yeah. I mean, it was... I mean, it's still... I mean, it, it's certain, like, certain, like, if you go overseas, it's still, like, it's, I don't know, it's, like, in these fans' DNA. It's, and it's, you it's, are, too. Because keep in mind, 50, you know, who kids? Yeah, it's... it's, it's is synonymous with 50 Cent. It's, it's just my... I, I woke up, I think the day I officially woke up and I thought this shit was amazing is when I see like Nelson Mandela is in front of me. Mm. And it was the first time in South Africa and even 50, we landed in South Africa. I think we flew from Australia to South Africa, like some wild 80 hour flight. Like mm. we landed in South Africa, first time in Africa and 50 looked at me, he was like, yo, holy shit, I'm in Africa. From all this shit, from Southside Jamaica, Queens, selling nickel bags. I'm in fucking South Africa, and we're hanging with Nelson Mandela. Mm. Like, it was just, like, mind-boggling. Was like, there ever a situation where you almost died in Africa? A few situations. I almost <laughs> died, like, 38 times. I think I counted, like, 36, 38. Shit, it could have been saying rest in peace to who kid on this Yeah, I almost, I almost died in, like, what was it, like, I think it was, like, Beirut or something. Like, the fucking ceiling almost fell on me i see everybody running off the fucking stage buck banks 50 everybody jumped off but i thought it was part of the concert mm. they're screaming at me like get the fuck over here you dumbass nigga and I, I thought it was part of like the show and meanwhile i looked to the right and i didn't see I, I saw like like workers like holding on the rope trying to keep the ceiling up from falling on me mm. so i could have died like right there like it, it, was, it was crazy but all the other times like uh, what is it, like what was it Estonia not Estonia fucking uh, Tanzania the whole country mm. grid goes out grid fuck, what the fuck like everything goes out so the only way to leave is through a tank they, mm. they put us in a tank fucking Sierra screaming crying her ass off she's, she thinks she's gonna get raped when she know. was down in the, uh, Africa with <laughs> you huh she was down there with you she's guys she's performing and then, the, and then the, the grid goes out like mid performance and she's screaming like on stage like ah <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I shut the door. I think it was me, Buck. I think, I don't know if Tony Ayo was there. I could have sworn Tony, yeah, Tony Ayo was there. Because I remember the sandwiches. It was like these, it looked like rat meat. Like, mm. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> they, they gave us like these sandwiches in the tank, but I didn't know what meat it was. And I kept looking at Yeo, you know, you think this is rat? Like, <laughs> it, looked, it looked like a rat paw. <laughs> In the bud, I was like, whatever. We 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 let that shit go. But we actually took a tank to the airport to escape like the chaos. What like, the fuck? Because a tank, a real tank, like a real tank. We got in a tank and then who was a, in there? It was me, Yale. It was two tanks. Yeah. Fifty was in another one, and we went straight to the airport. And the Sierra? airport, Sierra was. I don't know how. She, I think she was in the car. I don't know. I don't know. She she met us later at the airport. But this is the funny thing. Like I'll tell you how it ends with Sierra because. We had a private jet that took us everywhere. So we went to the airport and it was closed. And then the African promoter gets out and then he just walks in there. Like, I'm just talking about clothes, like everything lights out, everything. So we're like looking into the fucking airport and then you see the lights coming on. The promoter is just turning, he's just turning the shit on. He opens the door. We go in there. There's no customs. And we just go straight to our plane. The pilot is there. He's hanging, but we had no more room. For like, cause we didn't come there with Sierra. Sure. So I think Fifty was dating Sierra at that time. I don't know. Like, mm. Sierra had her dancers or some shit, and we were like, "Oh, we'll take Sierra." But <laughs> see ya, peace. <laughs> Yo, all I know is, is the door shut, and we took off. Sierra was on the plane with us, and I don't know what happened to the dancers. All the <laughs> cause it, there was no power. <laughs> I was like, this girl's heartless, yeah, yo. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> yo, no, nobody ever checked up on them? I don't know. They're not my dancers. I don't fuck up checking on them for shit. Yo, Max, uh, how crazy was the groupies, man, when G Unit was at its height? I mean, again, let's not say G Unit will forever be classic. They are okay? classic, and then I, I find it mind boggling, like when you still go back to Europe 
the, the groupies are still there, the same groupie. I'm they like, make yo, you feel bitch, young you didn't get married? Like, you didn't have no kids? Like, mm. you, you really stay there and wait till we come back mm. to, like, there's, like, residual groupies. Like, they're, like, so loyal. I don't understand. Like, they have, like, G-unit tattoos on their asses. Really? Like, so they, they do it on purpose so because they want you to fuck them mm. and see the G-unit on their ass. Like, mm. that's the only reason they did that. Mm. And then it's Germany, Paris. I have my own. Is it one? I know you said you did threesomes before on Howard Stern. Mm. Foursomes? It's the yeah, most you ever had. Everything. Everything you think of, like, group sex. It was yeah. crazy, man. Like, <laughs> Oh my God, I don't know if uh, I could talk about it with the other units. You know, they're in love with their wives. They yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want to. Honestly, that. don't give a fuck. But anyway, but there was a lot of like, man, it was everything. Anything you could think of. I mean, probably the weirdest one was like, maybe a pregnant chick mm. was in the group sex. I was like, yo, why is there a pregnant? This was. Yeah. Like, I'll never forget. This is New Zealand, and then Banks was in the closet. With the chick smashing, I'm smashing the chick in the bed. Banks smashing in the in the closet. This is years ago, so Banks ain't gonna get in trouble. Yeah, and then one of our homeboys is like doggy style, like a pregnant girl. Like <laughs> and I, it's not like the girl's like you know like a month pregnant. The bitch is like seven months. Like I'm ready to help the bitch push the baby out, yo. Like seven months, and she she just wanted. To just have fun with G Unit, but I'm like, yo, why is she pregnant? What what's going on here? Like, and dudes is hitting it. Like, <laughs> I was like, yo. yo, that shit is crazy, man. I don't know, man. You know, over the years, <laughs> yo, yo, you, that shit is wild, man. I don't know, man. She didn't even shave. Yo, like. <laughs> yo, o- over the years, you know, one thing that uh, has been admiring is Fifty has had problems with different people. Mm-hmm. But you've been able to stay afloat, like meaning, like how do you know who and not to affiliate with? Because you know, I remember, like you, you think you were still cool with, uh, well, not cool with, but you, you never not became friends with people. Like Ja Rule, you, you have no relationship with him. Um, I, d- I mean, I, I used to have like some form of a relationship with Ja Rule, but it was never a relationship because I used to DJ for CNN, and you know, mm-hmm. Nori's yeah, yeah, best sure. friend was Ja Rule sure. back then, so he was around. And I said, what's up here and there? But, you know, they weren't paying attention to the DJ back then. But uh, I never had a relationship with him. Uh, I had, like, a bit of a relationship with uh, uh, with Irv Gotti because I needed I needed the music back then. Sure. So I, I had to go through him to get, like, exclusives and stuff like that. And even when I, I think I leaked some crazy shit where Raekwon was cursing him out yeah, yeah. in the intro. And that's, that's what got me to have beef with a K-Slave because, yeah. you know, back then it was a big no-no to take a track off of other people's mixtapes. But I didn't know that it was taken off of K-Slave's tape. Like I said, Splash was giving me the exclusives and Splash just gave me like a CD with just mad stuff I could pick sure. from. And I heard this intro of Rick Kwan cursing out Irv Gotti and I thought it was funny. So I put it on the intro of my tape. And meanwhile back to the japan thing i left to go to japan like after i dropped the tape two days later i went to japan so by the time k slay found out about it k slay's trying to call me to beef with me like yo you took this shit from my tape blah 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 which is a no-no back then there's no real cell phones there's no like i mean uh, maybe email but i doubt k slay would be emailing me sure. there was no like texting or none of that shit so i'm in japan for a week so meanwhile, I'm in Japan, K. Slade thinks I'm ignoring him. Like, I'm not returning the phone calls, the pagers, whatever. Maybe he beat me. Mm. I, I wasn't getting none of that shit in Japan. So he goes into the studio and does a record, and he's dissing me and my Japanese, you know, soon-to-be wife at that time. Because my mm. Japanese chick used to do all my mixtapes. Mm. Like, she used to distribute and pick up the money and shit like that. So she, he did a record dissing me and my Japanese chick at that time. And... Meanwhile, the streets is like, yo, K Slade's dissing you. When I landed from Japan, that's the first thing I got. I was like, what? So like, for what? Like, and then he's still looking for me. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I cursed him out on the tape. I, tr- I, I, I re-edited a Cameron song to act like Cameron's dissing K Slade. You know, Cameron's from Uptown. Sure, sure. So it's kind of like embarrassing to have a Cameron exclusive, and it sounds like he's dissing K Slade. I think Cameron was dissing somebody, but I made it. I made. I lied and made believe that he was dissing K. Slay. So now this shit looks fucking embarrassing. So K. Slay is like waiting for me to pick up my money, 
in Harlem. He knows we both go to the same bootlegger, and my boy already sold out the tape, so I had to pick up maybe 200, 300 bucks, some shit, and I had to pick it up. So I think he had a lookout that was there. Mm. Like, you know, he's in Harlem, so they're just chilling, waiting, and hanging out. So I usually come pick up my money maybe Tuesdays or Wednesdays. So it's either those two days. He had a lookout there. I get there, and the fucking, I guess the the lookout alerted K Slay. So I'm over here waiting for my money to be counted and be paid. Then now K Slade comes out of nowhere with some other guy. And I have my guy with me, mm. but it was like a Mexican standoff because his guy had his hand <laughs> had his hand in his pants. So it looked like he had a gun. So I'm in the car. I ran to the car. I was like, yo, man, I think K Slade's here about that tape thing, but I think it's about to go down. So I told my boy, yo, they believe you got something in your pants too. So my, my boy gets out the car, and it, my boy looks menacing too. But he puts his hand in his like jacket, like 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 he like, like he's like no no. I don't think I don't even think either of us had a gun, which is even more funny. I don't think none of it. But we, we I, I had to act tough. I, I'm not a tough guy at all. But I had to act like I wasn't scared. Or I was tough. So K Slade fucking comes out of nowhere. Yo, man, fight yo right now. Fuck you up right now. You try to play me. I was like, yo, wait a minute. Wait, let's let's chop it now. I want to talk about it. Blah, blah, blah. You try to play me. You got camera on there. Try to, I was like, yo, so he's taking off his jacket, getting mm. ready to fight me. I think he had like a tank top or some shit. I don't know. In case they just want to beat the shit out of me, right? <laughs> so I just was like, I totally reversed the whole shit. So my man, is he had a, his boy was there on the side. I don't know if he had a gun. My man put his hand in his jacket he ain't got no gun so then i'm like yo man i literally just got this new white polo shirt man i, I don't really got i don't want to fight right now mm. and, and the slave was like <laughs> what <laughs> yo fuck out of here we fight right now but it, it fucked him up so much that he just started looking at me and he was just like this nigga is really like a weird crazy nigga man like this nigga is fucking crazy. And then Kingsley just got his car and drove off. You know, you had, uh, it's so funny because you had beef with so many different people, but nothing ever happened. Nah. You were able to walk your, like, not, you were able to maneuver your way out of so much different beef. I remember, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but the Big Pun story where the Big Pun wanted to fucking kill you. That was you. like the worst one and I escaped that. that but that's what I'm saying. I was going to say that had to be the worst one. But but would you say like he's the one that you believe out of like people being real gangster? You know how people talk like back then? No, you, he yeah. is the epitome of like, that's probably the closest I ever got to any street connected bad situation. I've been in like crazy bad situations where I almost got fucked up or I escaped. Thank God I never caught it. Like, you know, this DJs that got beat up. I mean, you heard the stories. They get caught. They get their ass whooped. Sure, sure. I've never, I don't know why I avoided it. I almost got murdered by Styles P. I, uh, yo, Styles P? Yo, Styles P was about to stab me. Like, I escaped it, like, literally five minutes. Like, I was five minutes from getting stabbed. But mm. I, I left in the car just in time. Mm. Why, why did he want to stay with Styles is, is such a good dude man why would he want nah, to nah he'll tell you the story he'll yeah. tell you that shit clear as day I the, 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 the thing that's fucked up is I went and shot a whole music video like I shot a, a D-Block video with everybody Jadakus fucking everybody that's in D-Block I shot everybody Sheik Looch and Styles is last to come but I dropped the tape a week before I, I, I got approval to do the video so I'm trying to hurry up. Me and Dan the Man, I'm trying to hurry the fuck up and do this video before, you know, they get wind of me leaking this Styles P single from his tape. Like, his album ain't even out yet. True. Sure. So my excuses back then was, oh, I got it from the internet. But there's no excuses when it comes to Styles P. You know what I'm saying? So I'm on, like, the last, maybe Styles P. No, Sheik Luce was the last verse to shoot. Meanwhile, they had shotguns there. I went to, like, their warehouse in the Yonkers. I don't know if they still have it, but it was, it was a rundown, like, studio slash warehouse where you had to, like, jump over steps. Like, some steps was missing. Like, you go fall in and, and die. Like, it was, it was some weird abandoned type building. I was already scared as hell. I'm in Yonkers. I could get beat up. You know, I, I was very a timid, scary DJ. Sure, like, sure. So I'm shooting the fucking video, and we're in the last scene, and I, I'm telling myself, finally, I got away with murder. He doesn't know that I leaked his song yet. So I'm putting, like, the last, I'm helping Dan the man put the last camera 
stands in the car or whatever, and we just shut the fucking uh, the hood of the, whatever the, the trunk of the car. We just shut it. And they sing out here, oh, good, and that stops me screaming, yo, yo. I was like, get in the fucking car, we're out of here, yo. and we escaped like literally five minutes. He, I, I heard he was running down trying to get me. He had like a, uh, a fucking pocket knife or one of them blades or whatever. Like, Butterfly knife? Like he was about to stab the shit. I think he was going to stab me. Are you, have, okay, so have you ever seen Caseway again over the years? Are yeah, you, he's my best friend. Okay. Yeah. What about Styles P? Yeah, f- cool Yo, as fuck. it's crazy how you escaped all these fucking problems. Best friend, everybody. What about like, Big Pun? I mean, rest in peace, but were you able to after, see After, yeah, yeah, we had a great relationship after. What like, about Fat Joe? Yo, I ate at Cipriani with him. Really? And then I was telling Cipriani. him Cipriani. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm telling him like, yo, I cannot believe that we're even here today, like eating. And I and I avoided you like countless times. You guys chased me. Spanish guys, mafia was about to crush you, man. Yeah, and then, and then uh, I remember one time <laughs> I was picking up my watch at a jeweler, and then of course it's Pistol P's jeweler too. Yeah. So I'm, my jeweler's taking forever, and then I had like a thirty thousand dollar watch, and I'm like, oh please don't bring this watch out to show me that it's clean because if Pistol Pete see it, yeah, I don't know where this is gonna go, because Pistol Pete is he's been trying to get me for years. Yeah. So, but this is like way, like years down where it could go down, but it may not go down. This is like residual beef, like Yayo, sure. Maddox. DJ Khaled. Yeah. It's not like 50 chasing anybody. This is like, there's still some residual friction out there where we're G-Unit and they're Terror Squad and I am G-Unit whether you like it or not. What better way is to kidnap who kid or, you know, rob him, take his watch. So <laughs> I, I'm over here calling my brother. Like, my brother was nearby so I had to call my brother like, yo, come over here with the guns or whatever. I don't give a fuck what you got to do. Just get over here to the Diamond District. Uh, Pistol P's in here. So meanwhile, my brother's in fucking the tunnel coming through. And then Pistol P is like just standing there. So he's on the phone too. So I don't know. I, I thought he was calling somebody to like be in the front. So when I walk out, they grab me. I had all these scenarios going yeah, sure, on in sure, my head. head yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then Pistol P came up to me and he started tapping my back. He was like, who kid? You're a good guy, man. Mm. You know what? You're a fucking good guy, man. I'll check you later, man. And then he left. So meanwhile, I'm like, yeah, he's outside waiting for you. I don't know if he's outside waiting for me. So I told my Julie, you fucking asshole, why well, you brought my fucking watch out, man? Put that shit back in there. I'm not leaving with that shit. I left my watch there. So I'm, I'm walking. I'm sticking my my brother taking forever to get there, and I stuck my head out. I'm looking around the corner. And this is like Diamond District. This is like fucking the, like daytime. But these niggas, you know, Terror Squad don't give a fuck. Like, yeah. get you at any time. You know, I've heard stories where they DJs got beat up. They're in the hospital, back broken. I've heard the stories. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I don't got time for this shit. And then he just wasn't around. And then I've just been cool with Pistol Pete ever since. That, like, I, after yo, that. Yo, that shit is fucking crazy, man. It's horrifying. Like, the only two groups I've ever been super horrified that I took their music, it has to be D-Block, which I escaped. Matter of fact, three. D-Block, I escaped, and I indirectly leaked a Fat Joe song because of the Chris Lighty connection. I leaked some Violet, a record by mistake. Somebody in the label gave it to me, and then I was about to get killed for that. But I had to get out of that Fat Joe shit, mm. the pun shit, of course. And then the the third group of all times where you really got to be out of your mind and leak anything from Wu Tang. Mm. You've never heard Wu Tang leaks. You never heard Yo, this is Method Man. You never heard Raekwon. None of that shit. I'm best friends with all of them, but I kind of like stay super clear from anything that had Wu Tang. Mm-hmm. On there, like Ghostface Killer was a maniac. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like uncontrollable. I ain't got time for that shit. I got cool with ODB. He Rest did some hot peace. night. Yeah, he did some hot night seven shit with me. You know, I, I I was very cool with them. Eventually, Raekwon. Everybody came into play. Raekwon was the one who accepted me, and then I toured. I remember I did a DJ for CNN, so we had to tour with Red Man and Method Man, and then I got cool with Method Man on tour. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, where the hell's Olivia, man? Man, I was just asking about that the other day. 
I have no idea. She's probably with some Jamaican guy, some Jamaican singer. I don't know. She she always dates like Jamaican like artists and shit. But yeah, I was in love with her. But we were always good friends on the road and shit like that. Yeah, everybody thought we were like messing around, but never. Yeah, no. Nah. You know, uh, when you, you've been around for so many moments, do you remember a moment or a mo- couple of moments where when you felt that uh, you know, like, because G Unit again and and there was a height where it was like you know it was on top of the world you know do you remember being up at Hot 97 with Funk Flex or, you know where all G Unit was up there like do you remember a moment where you're like holy shit like you know we you know, it's it's hard to find those moments because when you mess with 50 you kind of like go so high up you become desensitized to like other shit I feel like we've hung out with like terrorists and leaders like I mean when I saw that the Prince of Monaco was like my my homeboy. It's kind of like I don't know. It's weird to see other situations because you're desensitized. And then I'm coming from a background where I've done shows where you see shootouts, people beating everybody up, fifty beating people up. Like it's hard to like fathom those moments. The only moment that I can remember that was like like game changing was just us with. Nelson Mandela, like that it's shit insane. fucked my shit up. Like I was like, oh, I can't believe I'm even here. Like I was putting mixtapes together as a hobby. Yeah. And now I'm with Nelson Mandela that like, you read in the books that was an apartheid that was locked up for some crazy shit. And now I hear him screaming because you know he he was like kind of like partially deaf in one ear. So every time he would talk, he would scare shit out of us. Fuck it, what's up, man? Like he'd be like, we like, yo, like, yeah. he'd be like, yeah. I was like, yo, what up, nigga? Like, it was just crazy. And he would say, like, he would talk to us like it's hip hop. Like, oh, that's shit. just that, you know, it's just experiences like that. It's just mind boggling. Like, I've I've talked to y'all about the Michael Jackson shit, but those experiences, it's like, it's best to have the experience than the talk because it's just weird. Like, yeah, no, never, no I know, ne- I know. You'll never hear it or see it. I know. Even though you told that uh, Michael Jackson story, one second, we're gonna go to a break. Michael Jackson cursing. We're gonna go to a break real quick. I want you to just tell that story for people who didn't listen, even if it's a different version of it. But I will say this before we go to break, man. You know, you toured for years, for years. You know, does it ever get boring now? Because uh, it- you're still touring. You know, you still do tours. Like you mm-hmm. still, you know, you were uh, with uh, um, Waka, you know, t- uh, shutting down every night, man. I, I mean, I, I, I've been seeing like all the college shows you've been going to like and shit. EDM shit. EDM. Like, it's, it's just upgraded to a different level. Does it get boring? You know what I mean by that? I remember my pops going traveling for work and I used to be like, oh shit, that sounds amazing. And he'd be like, yeah, not really. You mm-hmm. know, everything looks amazing until you do it for fucking a certain amount of time. Yeah, I mean... It doesn't. I get I get aroused when it's like ten, twenty thousand people, mm, mm. but I also get aroused when it's like three hundred people that's controlled at a hundred percent. Sure, it's hard to control like twenty, thirty people. If you could control that, I still get the the DJ jitters and the adrenaline rush of like, yo, I am God right now, and it's a home run, and there's no turning back. Like. This, this shit is amazing it's, it's it's like a drug or I don't know it's hard to explain it doesn't get boring it gets boring to me where like right now I don't use headphones mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I DJ like clockwork and I've been touring so much that I'm able to read anywhere where I'm at mm. so it's exciting it's slightly it's not it's not super crazy to me like it used to be but it's it's cool that I, I could read like countries that don't speak English, but you could read them. Like mm. it's not easy. And then I, you could tell like these the promoters book me over and over because sure. they, they know that I know how to read like people in Dubai. Sure. People here. Pe- you know, it's like Sure, you're a seasoned veteran, man. It's yeah. it's it's all about reading the crowd. But t- I get turned on when it's ten, twenty thousand sure. jumping up. Sure, festival. So. You know, I, I get kind of jealous when you see like Calvin Harris and Tiesto they, yo, how do they make so much money, man? And uh, you know, and 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 you don't say. And I don't mean that towards you. Like, yeah, you know, like, I mean, how do they make you know production? Yeah, these people go there to hear their production. So it's like they're an artist. So that's what I got to get into this year. So I already started my own shit. 
So I'm dealing with all the young, all the new young rappers that you guys are dissing every day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not not be, me. No. no, I mean, not you, but I'm just saying like. I know what you're saying. I know yeah, what you're saying. All the old heads don't understand, but I do because I do the festivals. I sure, do their sure. fucking college shits. And then it's, I feel like, you know, it's cool that I do understand, you know, and then I have the old school golden years. Sure. The belt is under me too. Sure. But I have a way to bridge the gaps, you know, like, you know, make it understandable in my in my point of view, because even me DJing the other day, I DJed in Harlem and I knew how to read them. You know, mm. you know, uh, 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 I'm not saying like an old school DJ would be in there playing fucking Nas and shit like that. Mm. But I mean, I killed it with Shaq West, killed it with Mad Other. And, but it's like you should see the kids like. What the fuck? Like this is who kids like turning it up. Yeah, I still did the little G in the set that they all the hard shit that they would know, but then they were bugging. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Mm. I do white events more, mm. but the the black kids was like, yo, I can't believe this is who kid up there like still murdering like. But it's all about like, you know, radio helps a lot too. Sure, yeah. it's still evolving. It's it's kind of unfair for uh, a DJ who used to be the shit, but they're not involved in radio. They're not engaging all the time to understand what's new, what's not. It's easier for me, you know? And then I'll play whatever bitches want to hear. Sure. You know, I mean... P- pussy runs the world, man. If you see a wet vagina with shit coming out... Well, how the hell do you see that? You got to play the hot shit. How do you see that from the DJ? That's what man. I see when I play all the hot shit, you I know? mean, shit, I need to... When I go to London, it's going to be vaginas oozing all kinds of shit. Yo, you're speaking of vagina, and I don't mean <laughs> to go, th- go here with you, Sheesh. but speaking of vagina, but... Yo, how's your relationship with your parents, man? Oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> yo, yo, kid, you're a sick motherfucker, yo, yo. Oh, uh, yo, I only bathed with my parents no, 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 young, no. Man. yo. Like, again, not now. Yo, this the, is not Bill Cosby. This yo, is like regular Caribbean the story, life. The story you told me, okay? Um, <laughs> oh shit, I just nah, it's all good. <laughs> yo, yo, the story you told me um, of when you were young, your mom's your mom's and pops a Haitian, right? Yeah. Well, Haitian sock passe. Yeah. Right, and uh, that I guess you said. Now, why did you all take a bath? Was it to hurry up or? <laughs> it was. I don't know. I, I I was very. I'm not intimate with my parents, but I was I was the annoying kid that didn't stop sleeping in the bed till he was like eight or nine. It's weird shit. <laughs> yeah, your feet were like, I was in the, the middle bed. of my parents watching TV. Like <laughs> go out, go to sleep. I had like nightmares of like. I don't know. I used to have like these weird nightmares of like ghosts and zombies like feeding me to like people and I don't know. I I, I remember I had a dream when I was young. It's still clear as day. Like I think a zombie in Haiti threw me in the oven and then they were putting like paprika on me and fucking like oils and, and vegetables and motherfuckers was eating my shit. Like, and I was still alive. And it felt so real that I had to sleep with my parents to get out of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because voodoo was on some wild, like, like I remember my parents sent, a, like, a, like he paid for a voodoo doctor to take the spell off of me. Because there, there, was, there was a voodoo guy in, like, you know, in, in Port-au-Prince that would stick his head in windows and, I, you know, newborn babies that were there. I was a newborn baby, of course, and he would stick his tongue out, ah, do weird shit, ah. So my aunt caught him at the window. Imagine you coming in the room and your aunt catches like some random voodoo guy like sticking his tongue out, putting spells on the newborn baby. He, she had to call my father. My father flew to Haiti, paid a voodoo doctor to take the spell off of me. Mm, mm. Like, that's how real the shit was. Hey, the motherfucker then. had to bring a chicken with you. You know, it's, <laughs> yo, yo, you know what's funny? For people who don't know, okay, who kid, how you got your name, and the, the way you got your name is because of your father. Tell, yeah. tell, tell the internet why. Uh well my father used to be like ooh and that's from my mother taking a shit yeah so the smell was incredibly fucking horrible he would scream it for like a good minute maybe like ooh and where'd you put the kid in there um well the kid came like later on um I took the whoo to high school I went to St John's Prep so if shit would pop off. Like, if I saw some girl's titties, I'd be like, whoo, if someone got beat up, whoo, get the fuck out of here. So the kids in St. John's Prep call me the who kid because mm. I'm, I'm the who guy. Every time I, if they see me, they be like, whoo-wee, whoo. And then, 
you know, when I became a DJ, I didn't want to be like Scratch Master X. Or yeah, some yeah, sure, sure. Shit. So I just, I made it dumb as fuck. So you're not going to forget Who Kid. How many people just call you like that? Like, like exactly Everybody how the drop me who goes. Kid. My mother calls me Who Kid. Nobody calls me by my real name. Shit is crazy. Listen, your journey is, uh, is, is honestly has been amazing and it's just begun. And the reason why I say that for is because you still have a lot more to do. You still have a lot more to go. Uh, you know what? Before it, it's funny because I I want to stay here forever with you, but mm. we just have you come back. Okay, I'll just have to come back. No, no, but before you leave, we got to get this Michael Jackson story for people who may never heard the Michael Jackson story <laughs> because this shit is fucking funny. You know. Well, my Michael Jackson story is is very simple. I lost my passport in Dubai Airport, and I they didn't check my ID when I had to fly to Bahrain. Mm. So I landed in Bahrain, had no passport. I called the the Sheikh and the Prince and told them, yo, I don't think I could DJ the Formula One event because I don't have no ID or passport to get in the country. I think I lost it. The Prince came to the airport, and then I, I, I explained it again. I think they're going to send me home. He was like, no, nah, don't worry. I'm going to call my father. Mm. So he called his dad, who's like higher up there in the oil business or whatever, like a Sheikh, and is Abdullah who was uh, Abdullah uh, Al Khalifa has a brother that owned the airport. Mm. So the brother called Fuck. the airport. Yeah. So the brother called the airport. was like, he signed for me. And then, he, and, then and then the thing that's weird is uh, I only had like a Bally's ID. Like I had like a, oh, a, gym card? a gym card with my fucked up photo on there. That's the only thing I had as ID. So they were about to put me like in a section, be ready to send back. And then all of a sudden everybody stood up military style they all gave the salute, and then the prince was like, "Yo, just just go through, just walk through." I was like, "What do you mean, just walk through?" He said, "Yo, my 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 father's brother called. He owns the airport. They signed for you. you. Go right through." I was like, "What?" So I went through customs, and all of them had their hands up. Nobody questioned me. Nobody checked for shit. And when I got outside, Ferraris, Lambos, you know, these crazy rich, spoiled Arab kids is waiting for me outside. I jump in. And this is it. I go DJ the Formula One event, no problem. But now I have an issue. I need a passport to get out of here and even to get back to the States. So I go to the customs and the U.S. customs like, yo, who brought you here? I said, oh, the prince. Well, you better go fuck with him. <laughs> you ain't getting shit here for another four or five weeks. I was like, five weeks? I got to wait for a passport for five weeks? Like, yeah. I was like, get the fuck. So I called him. I was like, yo, I think I got to be here for four or five weeks. He said, no, nah, don't worry. My uh, uncle owns the passport and shit. <laughs> so I was like, all right, well, whatever, man. Whatever you got to do, man. I don't get the fuck out of here, yo. So I begged Tyson Beckford to hang out. I begged like three people to hang out. There was a, a, a MTV host from the UK. He actually came here to work here too. I forgot his name, my bag. And I had uh, two other people. Uh, and uh, So random Tyson Beckford. Yo, Tyson Beckford and uh, John Legend. Okay. So... John Legend left and was hanging out with some other rich motherfuckers, but he didn't tell me nothing about Michael Jackson either. I think he kept it to himself. And Tyson Beckford was, he stayed with me like as long as he could because I didn't want to be in Bahrain by myself. So I begged him, yo, just postpone your flight. Sure, sure. So it's only going to take three, four more days for me to get, so let's just chill. And then the prince was like, yo, stay at my fucking palace. So the, 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 then, he, then he introduced me to Al Khalifa. Al Khalifa was like, nah, fuck that palace. Stay at my shit. So I said, all right, yo, I'm fucking go to your castle. Let's go to the castle. So I go to the castle. He's like, yo, this is for you right here. You can do whatever you want. There's women here. This is, this is yours, your section. If you want, like, food, drinks, whatever, go to the side. And if you need any car, like, yeah, like, every car on the planet. He said, yo, but my cousin or my son will take you to the mall, whatever. Just ask, whatever. So he just forgot to tell me that Michael Jackson is at his house, like, just hanging out. <laughs> So I go to the pool area to just see where the drinks are to see what kind of pool is there because, you know, I was, like, tanning and shit. Sure, like sure. So I get there, and Michael Jackson is at the pool, like, getting a tan. And the first thing I told him, uh, I'll never forget this shit, I, I was like, oh, shit, your legs are white because I thought he would have black <laughs> legs because I thought he bleached only the top of his body. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. I thought he only bleached the top of his body. Yeah. 
And so he, what did he say? He started laughing. He was yeah. like, eh, like laughing, yeah. you know, like his weird laughs and shit. So I was just like, so in my head, I, I kept it calm and collective because I didn't want to act like I was a groupie. Cause in my head, I, my head was exploding. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I was like a white girl, yo. I was screaming, like only in my head. So I tried to be cool. Yo, what up, nigga? Yo, it's crazy. Yo, I can't believe this. Yo. What are you doing here? And then uh, I, I, I forgot what jokes I was bringing up. I, I got him to laugh a little bit. I got him comfortable with my bullshit. And then uh, he was like, oh, okay. So he said, I'm going next door because he lives next door. Like the, the Sheck brought him out there and paid for his lawyer fees to escape all that molestation bullshit mm -hmm. trial going mm -hmm. on in America. Mm -hmm. So they, they made him a citizen of Bahrain. So one of the laws is like you can't say hi to him. You can't say what's up to him. Mm -hmm. Like anybody, anybody going up to him, they're going to jail. That's so, crazy. So that was the law of the land. So I was like, get the fuck out of here. So I was like, yo, let's go to the mall. Let's test this shit. So Jack, Mike, Mike was like, all right, fuck it. Let's go to the mall. Let me say fuck it. But he's like, yeah, let's go to the mall. So I was like, no. So he had a robe. He put the robe on. So we went to the mall. So just to walk around, me, him, and uh, the G-Unit Prince, Al Khalifa, which is the youngest one. And we just went to the mall just to fuck around. I went to Starbucks. Nobody said nothing to him. I went to the pizza shop. We walked around. You could tell it was Michael Jackson. Right? Sure, you sure. Know, he had the robe. He had the hands and everything. So nobody's saying what's up. I'm like, yo, it's Mike. It's Mike, Mike. Everybody's like, doo doo doo. Like just working and chilling. Nobody said what's up to him. So we chilled a little bit. And then we came back to the palace. And then this time, while we're going back, I called Tyson Bedford. I'm like, yo, you got to come to this address. Like, you're not going to believe who's here. And Tyson's like, get the fuck out of here. So he gets there. This motherfucker starts battling him like. Like he's breakdancing, like back spins on the floor, and all this. <laughs> like it's just like sand. This is like the desert. Like this is like you might as well say you're in Saudi Arabia. He's on the desert doing back spins in front of Michael because he had to battle him. He said, "I don't think I'm ever gonna have this opportunity. I gotta battle Michael Jackson." So he battled him, and he begged Michael Jackson to do the smooth criminal. And Michael Jackson's like, "Yo, that's special effects, man." I I can't bend my body sure, like sure. <laughs> so I'm fucking laughing my ass off, and then all of a sudden, he's dressing normal, and then the check is like, "Yeah, he's very conservative. I'm surprised you even got him this long. Like, he just says what's up, and he's out. Maybe he really likes you or whatever. Maybe he think he's you're cool. So he leaves, and then we're like, we're just happy that we just hung out with the motherfucker. Like, so we're chilling, and all of a sudden, we're gonna have a, ma a major dinner. John Legend's coming because John Legend wants to do a record with Michael Jackson. So I guess the the check set it up. So all of a sudden, Michael Jackson comes back. Now he's Michael Jackson. Like, outfit, glove. Oh, has, my God. <laughs> yo, now, I don't know if he's a superhero or whatever. Like, he went down a pole. <laughs> Motherfucker is Michael Jackson now. Meanwhile, we're all about to have dinner. I, I, I didn't want to sit in the fucking, like, the, the, you know, like the, the, the Shaq's table because that's, that's a royal table. So Michael Jackson had a seat. There was one open seat. But I assumed the seat was supposed to be for John Legend so they could chop it up about their song deal or whatever, whatever they could sure. So the, the, the shake and his wife was, was sitting there. I sat on another table with Tyson Beckford and all, all the other homies or sure. whatever. So all of a sudden, Michael Jackson's like, yo, who okay, Come over here. Yo, I was like, what? So I, I sat next to Michael Jackson at the royal table and we're still what talking. Fuck? So the first thing I said, I was like, yo, there's a lot of lamb ass here. He's like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> This motherfucker going crazy. He's like dying, yo. I couldn't believe it. Then all of a sudden, I said, yo, first of all, let me call 50 because 50's shooting an army movie yeah. in Morocco. So I knew 50 was on our side. So he's on another desert. I, you know, back then, I think it was like $10 a minute. Sure. So I called 50. I said, yo, I, I got him to come to the dress, like to his, uh, his uh, whatever, his dressing room on set or whatever. So I said, yo, 50, I got your brother here. So I put 50 and Mike together. And then he just couldn't believe it. He was like, what the fuck? So they're talking and yapping. But I'm like, yo, hurry the fuck up. It's like $10, yeah, 10, $10 a fucking minute, nigga. Hurry the fuck up. So I'm trying to get my phone back. And finally they stopped talking. And it was during the same time. I gave him a tape, too, that I did. Sure. I don't know why I always got these mixtapes. I gave him a tape so he could have for himself. But it's the same tape that Eminem did that record where he stepped on his nose or some shit oh like, in the video. So I try to, like, I'm about to give him a tape, but then I try to, like, back off and not give it but it was too late he was like yo what's that I gave it to him and he saw that Eminem was hosting it and everything I was like oh fuck this guy's gonna hate me but then he's like oh what's up with Eminem I love that guy why didn't he retire I was like what like I, I was bugged out that he knew like all that 
info. Yeah. But he didn't know who fucking uh there's certain people he didn't know. He didn't know who uh um what's that bitch that did that song with uh with Wyclef? Oh uh like this. Oh, Mary Jane? No, or? no, the famous uh, Spanish singer. Oh, uh, Shakira. Yeah, she didn't, he didn't know who Shakira was. Really? Like, I was bugging out over that. I was like, yo, like... You ever see Mike again? No, never. We were supposed to link up, because I was setting up a hook for him to sing a hook yeah. for a 50 hard record, like, yeah. just for the mixtapes. So I set the shit up, but I think his management started promoting it, and then Chris Lighty heard about it. And Chris Lighty deaded it because of all the molestation shit sure, going on. Sure. So he didn't want that bad press. But at those, you know, during those moments, I was doing Biggie and Fifty, Tupac and Fifty. Like those were like on the low, and they came out. Michael Jackson was supposed to be on the low. It was not a record where he's singing. It was supposed to be like a hard hook, and then Fifty's rapping. Sure, sure. But Chris Lighty didn't know what was going on. So he deaded the shit. Mm. He went press release. There is no record coming out. So there goes my private jet back. I was supposed mm. to go back like a month later with uh, Red Spider, who was mm. the producer at sure. that time, to f- do this Michael Jackson hook. I was going to film it. Yo, that would have been like my whole Rolling Stone. Yo, that would have been legendary, man. I was the only one on Rolling Stone with a Michael Jackson video and photo. Like, that whole year, it, the only photo that came up was me and Mike. Like, he was so on the low because of the molestation shit. Nobody knew where he was. He was hidden. He was hanging and out with you. I brought him out. I came out with him. He like... It was, it was, yo, 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 let me tell you something, man. First of all, just write the book. I can't wait to uh, what else you got going on, moving around. Uh, lastly, uh, we're going to end this episode. Um, is it true you slept with over a thousand women? Is it true? Uh, probably. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And also, is it true that uh, <laughs> you, is it true that you and Fifty perform while, while someone was dead? Where, where is that here? Oh yeah, that was in uh, North Carolina. Somebody, that's why I, I laugh when I see Give or Give it to Die Trying. Like that kind of like really happened one time because we couldn't cancel the show. Because if we canceled that show, it would have been more people dying in the club. Mm. It would have mm. been shootouts. It would have been crazy. <laughs> it would have been over. Yo, you got stories for day. Listen, internets. Uh, DJ was it on Instagram, Twitter. DJ Who Kid. Yeah, at DJ Who Kid on everything. Twitter, Facebook. Whatever. Shade forty five. Every uh, Saturday, baby. Every, every I Saturday, run the, I run the weekends. Uh, you know. Po- podcaster on and off, but I think that may become full time again. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fucking switch it up. Touring, and uh, non-stop. fucking shout out to uh, and I'm also doing uh, frat juice now. It's a new. I'm doing all the frat parties. Really? Yeah, it's all like wild frat parties. Listen, this and is, I'm like super old. So. You, you're one person that never stops evolving. I'm proud to uh, say that. I'm like the nigga Benjamin Button. <laughs> there he is. Internet, the one and only, the crazy, the sick motherfucker, the one who sits, uh, the one who nigga took a Mike Dean, the, the one who took a bath with his mom and dad and had oh, the rubber yeah. ducky. Oh yeah, I ain't mom came on. in, tits hanging, he ran. You yeah, know, I never got a heart on, man. That's my mom, man. <laughs> the one and only. I love her. The one and only who kid. Yes. Peace. See ya. Internet, if you enjoyed that episode, I want you to email me. At the premium peach show at gmail.com. Again, that's email is the premium peach show at gmail.com. Let me know what you thought. And listen, all my advertisers out there, all my big businesses, my small businesses, whoever, a friend, a store, you want to advertise on the premium peach show? Email me at the premium peach show at gmail.com and let's get working. Okay? Make sure you subscribe, rate, leave a comment on all streaming platforms of the podcast. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And we'll see you next episode. Cheer. Yo, man, this is DJ. Woo, kid. And you're listening to the Premium Pete Show. And this is the shit right here, man. If you want to laugh and you want to fucking get some info and you want to talk shit after, this is where it's at, nigga. So one more, right? Just simple. Locked into the Premium Pete Show. If you're locked in right now to the Premium Pete Show with DJ. Woo, kid.